Hello again. In this video, we will talk about a very important concept in sheet metal design, which is the K factor. In sheet metal design, in general, the length of sheets before bending is not the same of the length after bending. Let's see this in SolidWorks. If I unsuppress this feature here, let's measure the overall length of this, which is 58.85. Let's keep this here so we can remember this number. Now what I will do is that I will suppress this feature and now this thickness is 10 millimeters and this line is 5 millimeters away from this edge which means it lies in the middle of this section. Select measure and let's select this length. It should be the same. And here you can see that the value is different. Here we have 58.85 and now we have 55.71. So there is some difference between these two values. While logically this length should be the same as the length of this part when it's flat. From this point we need to introduce a very important concept, which is the k-factor. To simplify the problem, the k-factor is a ratio between something we call the neutral axis and the thickness of the sheet. When bending this part, the inner radius will witness some compression, and the outer part here will witness some tension. And that's why some deformation will happen, and that will change the length of this part. The location of the neutral axis depends on many factors, like the angle of bend, the sheet thickness, the material properties, the conditions of forming operation, and the operation type itself. That's why in SOLIDWORKS you need to define this value, then when it comes to manufacturing you will have accurate results. Here I have the same part as this one, but this time let's see how the k factor affects the overall length of this part. From here, I will define the k factor and let's see how it goes. So, in this case, I want to define a k factor of 0.5 and then the bend radius is 5 millimeters, then hit OK. When we say the k factor is 0.5, that means the distance between this edge and the neutral axis divided by the overall thickness equals 0.5. In other words, our neutral axis now lies in the middle of this sheet. When it lies in the middle, in this case, the overall length should be the same when we flatten this part. To make sure, I will edit this sketch. And now, I want to set this value to 5. When this distance is 5, then now 5 divided by 10, that equals 0.5, which is our k factor. In this case, the path link of this part is 55.71, which means when I flatten this part, the overall length should be 55.71. Let's see what will happen now. If I flatten this part, select measure, and now I will check this. Then it's correct, the distance is 55.75. Now, now let me do the definition of this sketch, and let's say I want this distance to be 2.5. Let's calculate the k factor, it will be 2.5 divided by 10, which means 0.25. In this case, I will go back here and define a k factor of 0.25. Let's see if they will match now. Now the overall length of this part is 51.78. Now it's different because we changed the value of the k factor. Now it's 51.78. Now let's go back to our sketch 
and now it's 51.78. So basically, the flattened part equals the total length of the neutral axis, and this defines the k factor. Let's finish this sketch and try another value. Now, I want a k factor of 0.7. which means this distance now should be 7. Let's double check this. The k factor equal the distance from this edge up to the neutral axis divided by the thickness. So now 7 divided by 10 is 0.7. So our k factor is correct. Here the length is 58.85. And let's double check this when we flatten this part. Let's correct again. So this is the simplest way to understand the concept of the k-factor. So there's no specific formula can give you the exact value of the k-factor. Because we have different angles of bend, we have different thicknesses, different material types, and many 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 factors. That's why when it comes to defining a value of the k factor it should be given by the manufacturer or the supplier of the raw material or you can get the value of the k factor using some experiments and that's easy we can do something like what we did here you can get some samples you can measure them and then you can bend them and measure again and with some simple calculations you will get an approximation of the k factor value in the majority of applications, we set a value between 0.25 to 0.5. And from this definition, we can tell that the value of the k-factor varies between 0 up to 1. There are many different ways rather than the k-factor. Here we have bin table, k-factor, bin allowance, bin deduction, and bin calculation. In this course, we will only use the k-factor but more practical and accurate way to use the bin table. You can find many, many bin tables on the internet for specific materials and for specific conditions. In this case, you will have more accurate results. Bin tables are considered as the most accurate way when it comes to sheet metal design. Because when you define a sheet metal part, you will have different angles, you will have different bins, and you will have different thicknesses, and in some cases, you will have different materials. That's why, whenever you create a feature in SOLIDWORKS sheet metal design, these values will be taken from these tables. And in most cases, these tables were built on experimental data. In this course, we will use the K factor, and we will stick to the value of 0.4. If you search the internet, you will find a lot of bend tables. Something will look like this. As you can see here, I have material of aluminum, and then I have the thickness. They have many different angles and the radius. And here, as you can see, I have many different thicknesses. You will find more complicated tables, and in the end, it depends on the application and the accuracy level required. For this course, we will only use the k-factor, and the value will be 0.4. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.